What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. Today we are diving into the Light Blade Grandmaster and I'm going to cover all the tips, tricks, and glitches to this strike to make completing this insanely difficult Grandmaster a little bit easier. Before we get started, if you enjoy the video and find it helpful, be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button and subscribe button if you're new. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a hunter with invisibility for this Grandmaster. No offense to Titans and Warlocks, but the hunter's invisibility can make or break different phases of this strike. The Omnioculus exotic chest piece will be an absolute must have for hunters. Titans will want to use Bubble or Thunderstrike, while Warlocks will want to use Stasis turrets. Lucent Finisher mod and Aeons will also be important in this Grandmaster to ensure heavy ammo for you and your team. I would suggest to equip all three Elemental Resistance chest mods. Arc damage received is significantly increased, so running max resilience will be a great asset as well. Along with Light Bearing Hive, you'll face up against unstoppable and anti-barrier champions. For those not going with the Gallarhorn loadout, you'll find the Arbalist to be a great exotic choice once again for this Grandmaster, along with the Le Monarch and even Devil's Ruin Saddle. As this Grandmaster begins, once the Light Blade has retreated, you can skip this opening encounter if you're not going for Platinum. This is where the Hunter's Invisibility will first come in. Once you've passed the steps of the Cathedral, the enemies will despawn along with the champions. Alternatively, you could kill the three anti-barrier champions first, and then skip the rest of the phase, but either way, once you reach the steps, the enemies will despawn. Additionally, it is here at the beginning that you can summon your Sparrow to use later on in the maze. Once the adds have been cleared, you'll be able to head back to the starting point to summon your Sparrow. Now, this is going to be for those who intend to use their Sparrow in the Crota's Maze. Now, this will require you to bring your Sparrow along with you throughout the strike, keeping it hidden and as free of damage as possible while facing off against enemies. Now, once you have reached the Cargo Boat, there are a few workarounds that you can utilize to safely get through this phase. Hunters can keep the entire team invisible throughout the boat ride. This way you can completely avoid having to take on the Witches, Acolytes, and Shriekers while on the bridge. If this isn't an option for your team though, I would suggest to then jump off of the boat and travel along the far right or left paths, using the outstretched points off of the walls to jump across to finally make your way to the portal to teleport you and your team to the boat at the end. This is a much more effective way of crossing as you can slowly engage the enemies from a distance rather than being in a kill box. Once you've gotten to the other side, you will have Thrall that will jump on board the boat. Instead of standing on the boat, you can jump to the ledge to the left of the boat. This way you can safely stand there while tossing a grenade or two down to the Thrall on the boat. And now Crota's Maze where, as I previously mentioned, you can take your Sparrow through if you have been able to successfully keep it with you. You will not endure any weight of darkness while on your Sparrow, so this gives you an easy run through of the maze as long as you've been able to keep your Sparrow. Only one member of your team does need to cross the final breach to remove the weight of darkness for your team, so you will find it best, if needed, to keep one person behind just in case. Alternatively, Titans and Warlocks can easily navigate to the end of the maze by sword skating to the far left as you jump off of the boat. This will require some practice though, so if you haven't attempted it, I would suggest to try it first in the normal version of the strike. Outside of these two workarounds, those who have to traverse the maze the normal way will want to use the benefits of Hunter's Invisibility and you want to hug the far right wall. While one hunter won't be able to keep the entire team invisible the whole way, two hunters most certainly can. Once you have cleared the maze and gotten to the boss room, the real challenge begins. 
the arc blasts from the boss will one shot you so using the pillars for cover will be important. You can use the outstretched wall spikes on the second floor terrace to hide out in on a pinch. You can glitch the boss out by having one guardian take on his aggro and then repeatedly jumping back and forth between one of the second floor ledges and the center boss platform. This will put the boss in a state of continuous jumping, which means he can't shoot his arc blasts. The other two members of the fire team will just need to keep their distance and save heavy for the end. Dealing too much damage at once can cause the boss to shift his aggro and then start firing his arc blast sporadically. So you want to remain in cover during this process. Waves of anti-barrier champions and light bearing hive will alternate as you bring the boss's health down. When they spawn in, the boss will return to the center and will be immune. You will want to spam supers and heavies on the champions and the light bearing hive as soon as they spawn in. Once the boss reaches his final health segment, he will start to enrage and he'll start to charge which makes it a little more difficult to force him into the jumping glitch. This is why you want to rebuild your supers and heavy before you bring him down that low. Lucent finisher mods again will be an amazing asset for you and your team throughout this strike to keep heavies full. And that's going to wrap up all the tips, tricks, and glitches to the Light Blade Grandmaster. I wish you all the best in luck this week. Let me know how your runs are going in the comments below and let me know what you're getting as rewards. If you've got any additional tips and tricks for your fellow guardians, be sure to let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button along with the subscribe button if this is your first time visiting. Until next time guardians, this has been Profane wishing you some happy hunting. Thank <laughs> you.